What is up? What's good? What's going on? How you doing? How you been? I hope you're doing well. I am uh, doing pretty good myself. Let me turn this off um, so I don't show any personal info. Um, so I am at the Laredo Yard, the Landstar Laredo Yard, and um, this is mainly what it looks like is uh, um, like a cross dock for Mexico. There's a ton of non-Landstar trucks coming in here, and there's a big dock. You can't see it, but it's just, just like right past me. I'll actually show you in a second. Um, I want to do my intro inside the truck where it's quiet. And then uh, then I'll get out and start showing you some stuff and I'll show you my truck and trailer and stuff like that. But um, there's a, just a ton of vehicles constantly coming in and out of this place. Um, it's a massive cross dock operation where uh, they're unloading stuff and loading stuff on some docks over here around the corner. Um, going in and out of Mexico. But I'm here because um, a couple of reasons. One, the brand new trailer that I picked up, it is actually a brand new trailer. It was made in October of 2020, and I don't think it's been used since then. It's been sitting around for like six months. Um, they did a DOT inspection on it after it was manufactured, and so that DOT inspection is like six months old. Landstar requires, uh, they are part of some kind of ISO compliance, ISO probably 9001 or something. And to have that ISO certification, they have to meet certain standards. And part of those standards is the 120 day inspections. That's the reason they have the 120 day inspections is because of ISO certification compliance. So uh, they have the same 120 days on the uh, trailers that they do on the tractors. So I'm here to get the trailer inspected. I picked it up yesterday and then I stayed the day and the night at the Loves that's like a mile down the road. And then I picked up um, my load going to South Dakota this morning and I just finished picking that load up. And right across the street from that is the Landstar Yard. Like, all of these places that I'm dealing with in Laredo are within five miles. Like, it's a five-mile radius. It's all off of the same street. It's Minor Road or something like that. I forget the name of the road here. But the place, the drop yard where I picked up the, uh, the, the trailer, the uh, Landstar Terminal, the Love's Truck Stop, and the CWS... Uh, um, cross border or cross, well, not cross, yeah, cross border, but uh, cross dock um, warehouse that I picked the load out of. Um, all of these places are off of this minor road or whatever it is, and they're all within like five miles of each other. So I'm not having to drive very far uh, over these last couple of days. But after I get the D DOT inspection done on the trailer, then I'm good to go uh, and start heading up to South Dakota. I have six days to get there and it's only going to take me two. So <laughs> I'm not in a huge rush. So I plan on hanging out here throughout the day. And then um, at night, I'll probably take off tonight sometime. Uh, so let's get out and it's probably going to be really noisy. And I apologize. I don't, I'm not wearing my Bluetooth headset. It's just using the built-in mic on the phone. So I apologize if there's any audio issues but we'll hop out here and I'll, I'll swing around and give you a little peek of what what's going on here and I pulled a muscle in my leg so let me put the phone down a second oh my goodness I have it a my right calf is killing me I pulled something on it all right so uh, oh that's me in the mirror can you see me in the mirror yeah so You step out here in the middle of the road. This is the cross dock operation over here. And right up there is the terminal. They have uh, um, showers. Uh, basically, the restrooms are showers. 
They have little men's and women restroom stalls, and they have showers in them. So they're in little individual rooms. So this is my uh, a brand new trailer. It's in amazing condition. It took them forever to load the trailer. I, I was like really, really close to me filing for detention on them loading the trailer. And uh, they almost didn't let me look in the trailer. They were, they were in the process of sealing the trailer because after they got it loaded, they told me to pull forward. And um, holy crap, that crane, like, damn. Um, they told me to pull forward and, uh, I did set the brakes and they were sealing the trailer as I was walking to the back. They shut the doors and were sealing the trailer. I was like, Hey, do you mind if I take a peek inside before you seal it? And, uh, um, Sorry, I was just looking at the tires. There for a second, I thought I saw that it says Blue Earth. I thought that that was Bridgestone. And on that one, I was reading Yokohama. I was like, are you kidding me? They got two different brand tires on here? No, it's Yokohama Blue Earth. Uh, this is, I think it's a Hyundai, a Hyundai trailer. Yeah, Hyundai Translead. I don't know if I've ever pulled a Hyundai. But yeah, they were sealing this thing up whenever uh, whenever I got back there. But they uh, they said, no, that's fine. You can take a look in it. So I popped the door back open and looked in there. And oh my goodness. They did a pretty good job of securement. But it is just like tons of little crap in there. Um, it, it's a, it, I, I can see why it took them so long to get that thing loaded. But yeah, nice brand new trailer and my pretty tractor. I don't do many, uh, many like shots of my tractor and the trailer, but that's, that's what my tractor looks like. I have the big sleeper version of the Volvo uh, T. Uh, it's the, the seven, the T760 in this year model is the normal sleeper version that most of the like companies have. Uh, and this is the T780, the premium uh, big sleeper version. See my cooler in the window there. See how I have it strapped in there? And I use that, uh, all that area in front of the cooler and the floorboard and stuff for storage. I've got like cases of soda and jugs of uh, um, uh, Hawaiian punch and then a bunch of bags of chips and shit. Uh, I'm a bit of a hoarder. I think I have too much crap in the truck. I'm, I'm always like, oh man, that would be nice to have on the truck. And I order it online. And then I keep putting more and more shit in the truck. And now it's to the point where I just got a ridiculous amount of crap in the truck. But yeah, this is the, this is the dock, the cross dock. They're just loading and unloading constantly. Man, there's a huge line of, of trucks to get into this place. But, um, so what's going on with me? I am trying to stay away from the truck because my APU is running and it's loud. Okay, like I said, I'm, I'm sitting here waiting on the DOT inspection guy. This is the spot that he told me to park at. I don't like where I'm parked at. I don't like this spot, but this is where the DOT inspector guy told me to meet him. I might move after he finishes the inspection. And uh, I don't know where in the hell I'm going to park at. They told me, I asked them like where I could park at, and they said the this might be the DOT inspector guy right here. No, this is TA. I don't think it was TA. The guy that is coming out to do it. I don't think he's with TA. But... Um, I forgot what I was saying. But yeah, they basically just told me don't park over in that direction over there along the fence. They said that's the only spot that I, they don't want me to park at. 
but this place is huge and it is packed oh my god man this place is massive and like there's just every spot's taken just about i mean there's spots there are spots but man this place is packed i don't know if like you can how well you can see the the scale of this place the Fort Worth terminal was nothing to, you know, brag about, but this place is huge. Oh, and the showers, I didn't notice any towels anywhere, so I think it's a bring your own towel kind of a deal. And that's one of the reasons I always keep my own towels. Um, I bring two towels with me out on the road just for situations like this. So after I get done here, I'll probably move parking spots. Maybe, I don't know. I might grab a shower first and then move parking spots. I don't know, I like, I kind of like how close I am to the terminal. There's not, I can't get much closer to the terminal than where I'm at. So I might stay here today. And I think I'm gonna leave this evening sometime, probably around eight or 9 p.m. and start making my way to South Dakota. I wanna leave late in the evening so that I can make it past all the major cities at night and then driving uh, early in the morning, Saturday morning shouldn't be bad. So even if I uh, am crossing through Oklahoma City at like eight or 9 a.m., that shouldn't be bad at all for a Saturday morning. Dallas is the main one I'm worried about. But yeah, nice, pretty trailer. Very, very nice. And I need to put some air in my steers. I just checked the uh, tire pressure in my steers. And uh, they're a little low. The shop, either the shop didn't fill them up to 120 psi like they were supposed to or they you know have been settling in their brand new tires and you know they're just put on the rim and everything maybe they settled a little bit and lost a little bit of pressure but i'm gonna have to get them up to the correct uh pressure and then uh monitor them and make sure that they are maintaining the correct pressure so i'm running 120 on the steers 110 on the drives and from what I read on the trailer tires they're supposed to be at 110 as well but they got the nice little auto air so I shouldn't have to worry about them too much if the loves has tire pass I'll just have loves air up my damn tires for me it's worth the five bucks to have somebody else deal with doing all your tire pressures but I don't know if the loves here has tire pass I love tire pass so anyway what all what all is going on um yeah I'm just gonna be heading to South Dakota there's you know not a lot to it I can't think of much to say. I'll just, this is what's going on with me right now. Um, my experience with Landstar has been like kind of negative so far. I don't know if you remember if you watched my orientation video where in orientation I, I talked about the sitting duck policy. Landstar has like a really insanely strict policy about uh, parking. You are not allowed to street park. Um, even if it is legal to do so, you're not allowed to street park unless it's a designated parking spot. And even then it's questionable. <laughs> um, like that seems to be a really big reason people get their contracts terminated is the setting duck policy. And, and I was like, you know, in, in, uh, orientation I was like you know 
street parking in these industrial parks is incredibly common. Like, that's normal. A lot of these shippers and receivers, they'll tell you to go park along the street out front and, you know, wait for us to call you to come in. And she said that we can't do that. You can't do that. Guess what? My first damn load that I just picked up did exactly that. I had to street park in front of the building. Now, it was a dead-end street that we were parked on, but... I had to street park and then the yard dog would come out. They What they did, they gave you a number to stick in your window and then uh, the yard dog would come out and drive down the road and find your number and he would tell you what door to go into whenever they were ready for you. And I wasn't the only Landstar driver that was street parked. Uh, there were there were Landstar drivers in and out of that place the whole time I was there, and they were all street parking. So, I mean, like I've already had, I've already done something they could have terminated my contract over. It's just, you know, I'm 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 all about rules and following rules and everything, but I hate rules that you can't follow why have a rule if it's more of a, a guideline and it's not really truly enforceable like it's it's kind of ridiculous because they're they're setting duck policy over here is it's i don't know i think they need to revise it the whole uh I just, I don't like it. There's just so many scenarios where you're going to be street parking with one of these trucks. It's almost impossible to avoid it. So it becomes one of those things where it's like, well, yeah, you can do it sometimes. Just, you know, be, you know, responsible and safe and, you know, try not to, you know, get into a bad position. Well, then... That means it's not a rule, it's a guideline. And I don't want to piss off these shippers and receivers. I think this guy might be going for this spot. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't want to be pissing off these shippers and receivers by being like, yeah, well, I can't park alongside the road, so either let me park in your place or I'm going to have to go find another place to park and you guys can call me. And then they might cancel the load on me or they may get petty and like make me, make me sit around for a long time. I just don't want to deal with that drama. But anyway, enough about the, the setting duck policy. I, I don't like Landstar setting duck policy. It's, it's irritating. But... What else is going on? Um, I can't think of anything else is going on. I mean, I'm gonna go set back in the truck. It's it's hot out here, man. We're down here almost in Mexico. We're like a mile from Mexico, and it is hot. It is hot. Let's get back back inside. That's why God created air conditioning. I tell you what, we weren't meant to be out here in this crap. Yeah, that's nice and cool. Oh, wow. That's better. Not only, like, is it hot outside, but I've got my reflective vest on. And uh, that's, you know, extra clothing that makes it even hotter. Oh, there's, I got something else that happened. Yesterday, a broker called and woke me up. 
And he was like, hey, um, are you looking for a load out of South Dakota? And I was like, um, I was confused as to like what in the hell this call was. Like who was this and why were they calling me? And then I quickly realized that it was some broker with Landstar calling me to offer me a load. And I was, I was asleep, man. I was sleeping so good. And I was like, yeah, after I deliver this load on the 28th, I am looking for a load out of South Dakota. And he was like, yeah, um, yeah, the 28th. Yeah, this, this one picks up the 28th. Um, I've got a load. And uh, the way he, he was like droning on, he was waiting for screens to pull up so he could read information. It was like he was just on some auto dialer cold call bullshit and he didn't have the information pulled up like he did not prepare for this phone call it was just like somebody else called my number and threw him on the line or something and he was like scurrying around trying to find information about the load wasting my damn time it irritated the hell out of me and he was offering me some cheap crap it was he was offering me like a two dollar and eighty cent a mile load uh, and I was, as you know, once he told me the rate per mile, um, it was going from like Des Moines, Iowa to, uh, Youngstown, Ohio. And, uh, he was like, yeah, it's paying uh two eighty a mile. And I'm like, all right, no, thank you. I don't pull anything under three fifty a mile unless I absolutely have to. And I said, thanks. And hung up. And he huffed and puffed as I was, you know, I could hear him huffing and puffing and sighing and shit like that as I was hanging up the phone. And right after that phone call, I went and I checked my contact preferences on my profile with Landstar. And on my profile, you can set your phone number and your email address and you can put a check mark in whether or not you want agents to contact you through your email or your um, uh, phone number. And I do not have my phone number checked. I have my email address checked. You know, if, if, they, if brokers want to send me emails with load offers, great. I'll get to it when I get to it. I don't want people calling me at all hours of the day, especially with me being a nighttime driver. I don't want to be getting calls and get woke up all damn day, and I don't want to have to turn my phone off and possibly miss important phone calls because I'm getting harassed by brokers. Uh, so I messaged my driver advisor, Kathy, and I was like, um, I just got a call from a broker offering me a load, and here are my contact preferences. I took a screenshot of it, and I said, I don't have it checked for them to be able to see my phone number. Um, is there some other place where I need to change this setting so that they're not calling me? And she said, call me um, and we'll talk about it. So I called today and she wasn't available. So I talked to Eric and explained to Eric what was going on. And Eric was like, yeah, what the deal is, is that um, that is one of the places where they can get your contact information, but they also have access to another application that has your contact information listed. And it has all your contact information. Um, so basically what it sounds like is if they do a basic search, it's not going to show my phone number. But they can go look my truck number up and it will show my phone number. Um, so if, if they do like a little bit of footwork, they can still get my phone number. And uh, Eric said, we can we can hide that for you if you want. And I said, well, do I have access to hide it? And he was like, no, we, we would have to do that for you. And I said, well, I don't really want to deal with that. Um, what about, how about we just leave it as is for now and I'll just see how much of a nuisance it becomes. And if it becomes too much of a nuisance, then I will, um, uh, I'll call you guys back and have you you know, hide it. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm like, all right, thanks. Bye. 
So I've only gotten that one call from a broker the entire time that I've been um, out here. I've only had that one broker call me. So maybe he was just really desperate to move a load and he was going that extra mile to get my contact information and the rest of them were just like not putting forth the effort into looking me up in a secondary system. But uh, we'll see how it goes from here. I I don't really want to deal with that crap. Um, being an owner-operator, you know, I, I don't have a receptionist to, to filter through the calls and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So that's some of the drama that's going on. Man, I hope this guy gets his ass out here pretty quick. Because I'm kind of hoping to get a shower and get some sleep, both before um, I hit the road tonight. And he is just burning up my free time here. It's already 12.30. It's noon 30. 12.27 p.m. So, and he's just... I, I don't know how long ago I called him. It's been a, it's been a while. Um... Everybody's really friendly. Everybody waves. That guy waved at me. Uh, we waved at each other. I, I waved back. Don't, I'm not an asshole. <laughs> kind of. Um, but yeah, he waved at me when he, whenever he was going in there. And he waved at me whenever he was uh, heading back out. But, um... And that, that's pretty much everybody. Like, everybody's really nice that I interact with at Landstar. Everybody's been really nice. Anyway, sorry, I was looking around the corner. Yeah, I'm wanting to get get a nap in and and do some things, shower up, and get a nap and stuff before. Oh crap. I accidentally hit the zoom and do some stuff uh, before you know I take off tonight I got I got plenty of time on the load like I can sit around and hang out but I would rather get moving I don't really want to sit and hang out in Laredo Texas I would like to get rolling in the direction I need to go. I'm the type of person that if I have a lot of extra time on the load, I prefer to hurry up and get there and then take time off. I don't want to be in a situation where I take, I just hang out down here in Laredo for four days and then I take off and then I have a breakdown and then I have to explain to the brokers why in the hell I can't make an appointment when I have six damn days to get there because I have a breakdown that sets me back by 12 hours. <laughs> I don't want to be in that situation. But I think what I might do, I was hoping the guy would show up for the inspection by, by, by now. I think what I might do is... Um, hop in the back and... Uh, let, me, let me show you... This is the pile of crap I was talking about. Those are all those bags right there. Those are chips and stuff like that. It's food in grocery bags. Um, and that box is, uh, it has extra plastic bags on the top of it that I use for trash bags. And uh, then it has a whole bunch of wet wipes. It's a box of wet wipes is what it is. But there's, uh, you can see the corner of a, a 24 pack of Coke right there. But yeah, that's my pile. That's my storage area where I store a whole bunch of crap. This is my Alpi Cool cooler. And uh, I have it set to... What do I have it set to? I think I have it set to 34 degrees. Uh, I the only thing I have in it right now are my leftovers. Those are, That's my hamburger helper. Uh, two bowls of hamburger helper. 
that little area right there doesn't get quite as cold as the main area. It's kind of like, I don't know, I wouldn't put anything in there that needs to be temperature controlled. I might put like candy bars or something that I prefer to be cool in there. Um, but yeah, that's my hoard, my blanket and all the rest of my crap piled up. I got, I keep the, uh, the bench out that right there, those, uh, that right there, the purple bag, those are the wet wipes. Th that's, I have a box of those right there. I sleep up there in the top bunk, microwave, um, the computer is put away right there that's where I store it when I'm driving and then I set it out on the table <gasps> so I might bust out with a computer hook the TV up to it and watch some TV and eat some uh, hamburger helper while I'm waiting for um, the DOT guy to show up here it's some kind of uh, mobile inspection guy um, he he just drives over here as needed to inspect stuff. So, um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm gonna try to make use of this time, and uh, I'm gonna grab something to eat. I just today, what I did today is I woke up at 8 a.m. or actually I woke up at 7 30 and uh brushed my teeth did a pre-trip and then drove over to uh the place where I'm picking up where I just picked up the load and picked up the load and then I drove over here so I haven't eaten or anything today it's not like I can't you know skip a meal it'd probably do me some good to skip a couple meals but I don't want to <laughs> so anyway I think I'm going to grab something to eat and uh, hang out here and then hopefully get a shower and get the hell out of here before long and get ma making my way to South Dakota try to do a driving video I tried to do driving videos when I was driving down here but there was so much construction and so much traffic and just so many things that kept interrupting the videos that I I just, every video kept getting interrupted. I just gave up on trying to make a driving video um, because every time there would be, you know, at like 3 a.m., there'd be like no traffic or whatever. I'd be like, all right, here's a good time to make a video. I get five or ten minutes into the video and then we hit some single lane construction and be like bumper to bumper traffic. Like even at three o'clock in the morning driving through Texas, it was like pretty steady traffic. There was never a time whenever it was just like no vehicles around me for five or ten minutes. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting the hell out of Texas and getting further up north. What I would really love to do after this South Dakota load is get a load and uh, run what I would like the area I would like to run in is like I don't really want to go any further south than Oklahoma City and then I just kind of like want to run Oklahoma City all the way up to the Canada border and I don't want to go um, any further east than Chicago and uh, west I don't really care how far west I go but um, I don't, the, the thing is, is that going out West, there's this big area of nothingness that you have to cross. Um, so I don't think I really want to go much further West than like the Dakotas. Uh, because if I get out into, you know, the Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, you know, those places, really, I'm going to be grabbing loads all the way out taking me to the west coast because there's not a whole lot of freight up in that area so if i start heading further west than the dakotas then i'm probably going to be heading all the way to the coast and i'm not really in the mood to be driving over in the coast right now the west coast is what i'm talking about i don't want to drive on the east coast either 
I just want to stay in the central United States and I don't want to go down into Texas. That's kind of like how I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to uh, look at the load board. There are loads sitting there right now that I could take that are good loads. Uh, but I'm waiting to see if there are better loads that pop up. But there's there's good loads sitting right now that I could take. It's, uh, it's, it's some really nice stuff up there. Um, and I'm not completely against going to the West Coast or the East Coast or anywhere. I'm just, those are my preferences. Uh, there are some really good loads that are like 300 mile deadheads from Beresford, South Dakota, where I'm delivering this load. There are some loads in Edwardsville, Kansas, about 300 miles away, that are going over to Washington. They're really good loads and they're constantly posted on the load board I can't remember if they're hazmat or not I think they actually might be hazmat most of them some of them might not be hazmat but yeah it's um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do it I would have to I'm going to have to, like, any time I look at going into an area, I have to search loads in that area I'm going to until I get familiar with what freight is like on Landstar's load board. Because freight is different on every damn load board. USA Trucks load board is going to be different than Landstar's load board. Landstar's load board is going to be different than the spot market. Now, Landstar's load board has a lot of spot market loads on it, so it's very similar to the load board or not to the load board, but to the, the spot market. Um, but it's not the same as running just purely off the spot market. It's it's similar. It's really similar. It's not the same. I could pretty much run off of the spot market if I wanted to at Landstar. Um, it was something that I've talked about with people. I can't remember if the orientation person talked about it with us. But it's something that I've, I've just, you know, chatted with people about. And it is um, a lot of these brokers go out and find loads on the spot market and then list them on Landstar's load board. That's how they make their money. That's, the you know, a large percentage of the loads on the Landstar's load board. Uh, the contract freight or direct shipper freight is the minority. So what I could do is I could go out and find loads on the spot market that I want. And then if I have a broker that's willing to do it, like if I have a broker that I work with regularly, or if I, um, you know, just call a random broker, um, you know, it could be a little awkward calling up a random broker and be like, yeah, I'm not really interested in any of the loads you have listed, but there is this load on the spot market. I was wondering if you would look into it for me. And, uh, you know, maybe you could, you know, get that load for me. Um, so you could do something like that. But anyway, I'm starting to ramble. I'm going to grab something to eat and it's looking like I have no idea when this guy's going to get here. So I was just sitting here waiting for this guy. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just go about my normal day go to sleep if I want to go to sleep, go, um, uh, get a shower, grab something to eat, watch TV, whatever I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and go about my business. And then, um, whenever he gets here, I'll deal with him when he gets here because I'm going to have to assist him with the inspection. Most likely I'm going to have to assist him with the inspection they, you know, they can bring their own little, um, things, uh, that they hook up to the trailer to provide like air and, uh, electrical and they can do all of the light tests and everything with one of those. I don't, I don't suspect they're going to bring one of those with them though. <laughs> I suspect that I'm going to have to sit here and press the brake and turn the signals on and stuff for them to do the inspection. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to go, let's get some of my pretty face in here. 
Hey, I don't even know if you can see me. Do I have it pointed at me? Is it good? I feel like a teenage girl taking a selfie right now. I should probably... How's it looking? I, I hope that... I hope that's good. I might make that like the... Uh, um, the wallpaper or whatever for the video. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, they want to grab something to eat, and I'm a little bit tired right now, so I'm having a difficult time kind of thinking about what I want to say and staying on topic, uh, because, like, my sleep schedule is all kinds of messed up. I was on a night schedule, now I'm flipped back over onto a day schedule because I had to pick up this load during the day, um, and I'm trying to go back to sleep here pretty soon, but I just woke up and I'm not tired. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to flip to a night schedule. What I might end up doing is just staying up all day and then around 8 or 9 o'clock at night, go ahead and leave and take off driving toward South Dakota and just drive until I get tired, you know, three, four, five hours, however long I can make it, and then just pull over and go to sleep and, uh, you know, just go from there. Uh, who knows what I'm going to end up doing, but... Um, We'll, we'll talk about it more in a, in a future video. And at some point, I'll probably talk about, like, my amenities I have in the truck. I know I showed you. I need to make an amenity video, like one dedicated to amenities. I went over my... Um, I've got that uh, refrigerator. That's a refrigerator. That has a compressor in it, and it maintains temperature really well. You can set it at a temperature of, like, negative 4. This can be a freezer or a refrigerator. It, you can set it at any temperature between, like, negative 4 all the way up to like 70 degrees um and then this is that this is that uh gray and white coleman uh cooler that loves sells for like 120 bucks and then i have a factory refrigerator over here i don't know how well you can see that i can't see what you're seeing um you know of course i have my tv uh, I have the PlayStation. I have an HDMI cable that I hook up to my laptop uh, from the TV. And uh, I can, you know, use the TV as a second monitor on my laptop and watch Netflix or whatever that you can watch on a computer. I can watch on that TV. And I have uh, internet, cellular internet with a Wi Fi router in here. So I have Wi Fi internet in here. Uh, just to, to provide internet to all of my devices and stuff. So one of these days I probably need to make a video on all of my amenities. One of the biggest questions people have out here is internet. Like what do truck drivers do for internet? And I could probably make a video on just that topic. What I personally do is there's a company, they're, they're a reseller. They're a shady, scummy place that resells plans and they exploit plans and yeah <laughs> so um it's called impact wireless they're also known as one wireless world uh they're also known as infinite lte they have several different company names that they operate under um but what they basically do is they exploit they go out and they find data plans that are not enforced. Like almost every data plan has a contract that says you're, you have a data limit or you can't use certain devices or something like that. What they do is they go out and they find data plans that don't enforce those rules. And then they resell those at a marked up price. And they tell you what specific equipment you can use on those plans without getting caught. Well, they still get caught all the time and when that happens they will send you out a new sim card and um or they'll tell you you need to get a different piece of equipment so what i use for internet is not what i would necessarily advise everyone else to use for internet but it's basically like home internet in the truck and i pay a hundred bucks a month for it which is worth it to me and 
I could go out and find all this stuff and do all this crap, the same stuff that they do, and I could pay less money than, I'm, than what I'm paying them to do it, but it's worth my time to let them deal with all that bullshit and them just keep my internet going. I'm paying a, a premium for the, the data plan because I'm paying some shady reseller to go out and find exploits for me. That's the markup that I'm paying for. And uh, it's worth it to me to have internet in the truck. And most of the time it's pretty nice internet and it's high speed internet. Uh, well, high speed for cellular. Uh, but sometimes in, in times of congestion, it can get slow. But I have several uh, options for internet. I can hotspot off of my phone. I have like up to 22 gigs of high-speed hotspot that I can do on um, my main phone. And I also have uh, T-Mobile that I recently got that's $85 a month. Um, I have a whole bunch of shit that I, I do, but um, yeah, I should probably make a video one of these days about amenities in the truck and the things that I do to make this truck really comfortable. Oh, I also keep a whole bunch of jugs of water. No, those are not piss jugs. Those are old Hawaiian punch jugs. And I keep, I keep them full of water. I drink that water. And I also use it to brush my teeth with and, you know, whatever other reason I can think of to use water. Um, I keep several jugs of water on the truck at all times. Um, I've had to put that in the coolant. You know, I've had coolant leaks before and I've had to use that water for coolant. Ooh, ooh, is this, is this? No, I don't think that's him. Uh, it might be, he parked behind me. Yeah, maybe maybe the guy is here. I don't know if you can see the tires. That is the those tires right there. That's the back of the uh, truck of that uh, maintenance, uh, that roadside service truck that just pulled up behind me. The back of his truck is right there. So I'm just waiting to see if somebody starts walking down the side of the trailer. I don't remember what his company name is. That maintenance truck was Southside Fleet or something like that. But, I don't know, this could take a while. There's a whole bunch of uh, roadside repair trucks coming and going uh, behind me. Um, I don't know what there's a tire rack that's really popular back there. I don't know what's going on with the tire rack. I think it's a whole bunch of roadside service people that are coming out here and replacing tires on trailers. And this is where they come over to pick up and drop off tires that they're uh, putting on the trailers. And maybe this is where uh, Landstar has their tires that they purchased to, to have installed on these trailers dropped off. I don't know, it's, uh, but it's, it's looking like this guy is not my inspection guy. He's probably just waiting for somebody to get the hell out of the way over at the tire rack. So anyway, um, I think I'll end that video, uh, and I'm going to go grab something to eat and watch some TV. So thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.